the hopes for the creation of state police gets dashed as the Senate and House of Representatives refuse assent. In National Assembly tasks revenue generating agencies to now generate 3 trillion naira annually. This is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadonye. Nigerian senators have bowed to President Muhammad Buhari, thereby rejecting the creation of state police. The Senate Constitution Review Committee, while it rejected the state police, resolved that President and the 36 state governors will constitute federal and ex state executive councils, respectively, within 60 days after being sworn in. Earlier, the House of Representatives had rejected a bill that was seeking the creation of the state police. In 2021, many political stakeholders had advocated the restructuring of the police and system in order to enhance the fight against terrorism. Joining us to discuss this is Colonel Hassan Stanlebo, a retired military officer and a security analyst. Good evening to you, Colonel. Many thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you for having me once again. All right, uh, we're looking at the issue of um, state policing, uh, whether to be or not to be. From what we hear, from reports we are saying so far, you know, the Senate and the House of Representatives are actually bowing to President Muhammad Buhari, and they are saying that uh, it is not to be. But let's look at this cross really, you know, state policing. Are you in favor of state policing? Do you think it is, uh, you know, the panacea to all of the challenges uh, bedeviling in other countries security-wise, really? Uh, thank you very much. I, I must say this on a very, very uh, serious, uh, frankly speaking, I am for state policing. I am for, uh, 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 I, definitely see the need for us to uh, begin to see how we can decentralize uh, the policing structure in Nigeria to allow for sub-nationals to be able to maintain their own police structure and more so to complement the, 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 the high deficit we currently suffer at the federal level when it comes to police. When you say um, the deficit we suffer at the federal level, can you be more explanatory? How do you mean? Uh, first and foremost, the statistics are just there and they speak for themselves. Uh, if you look at um, the UN prescription for uh, the ratio of uh, a policeman to how many citizens they are expected to police, we fall very far, far short of that. Okay, uh, I think the UN uh, prescription is about, say, nearly 400 men or so. We fall far short of that. And besides, when you look at our population surplus, what is the size of our police? The size of our police, I'm afraid, should be far below 300 or below 400 in terms of manpower. And when you look at the crime rate in Nigeria, if you look at the level of volatility we, we, we experience within our society, I think we should do some self-critique here. You know, uh, we are talking now like a family. Uh, the fact is that uh, we need more policemen. We need more policemen more so, I would say, to, 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 to do away with something I personally see as uh, a big slap on us, and that is... Carrying out police to carry out police duties. The more we allow soldiers to carry out police duties, definitely we shall have issues because that wasn't their training. For instance, the training of a soldier is shoot to kill, where the training of a policeman is shoot to maim for prosecution. The soldier has got no business with prosecuting the enemy. That is his training. He shoots you and move on. Or move on. 
So he's got a fox. And this is the enemy. That is the mentality in him. So to carry such a man to the street and say, look, shoot him. When you hear shooting, you aim at the heart because the essence of your shooting is to kill. If you shoot two or three rounds and you don't bring down your enemy, it's an offense in the military. So you bring such a man and tell him to name. <laughs> he begins to wonder, oh, God, now which one in our one mark I do now? Yesterday, in I say kill. Then you say name. I'm trying to be very realistic. So All right. Please, can we just be very, very reasonable and understand the peculiarities of our situation and allow sub nationals to recruit? All right, uh, still talking about subnationals uh, recruiting uh, police uh, to, you know, manage um, the affairs of security state um, wise. What are some of the issues really? Because some uh, people who are against uh, state policing, they have talked about um, the, the concept of the state policing itself uh, being subjected to abuse, uh, you know, by state governors. Do you agree with that particular postulation? My brother, I used to belong to that camp. I was one of those who, way back, was opposed completely to anything state police policing. Why? I said our politicians are very irresponsible, and they will not be able to pay the level of maturity we expect to be visited in the money. Yes, has that perception changed? No. But shall we, because of that, refuse to move forward as a nation? We must move forward. All right. We must move forward. Confront, excuse me, confront yeah, the issues, confront the problems, and see how we deal with it. Thank you. All right. Uh, glad that you have actually mentioned about, uh, you know, testing the waters, get into it, and over time confirm if there are issues and if there are issues, really, they can be dealt with. You know, but the other, uh, you know, you know, point of discussions that actually have come out, you know, on this particular topic of uh, state policing, another is that of um, f adequate funding. If you were to, to say right now, would you really say that the federal government is actually doing a good job when it comes to funding you know, the activities and operations of uh, the Nigeria police force? <laughs> you make me laugh when you ask somebody like me such a question because uh, I, I have been too involved, especially at the subnational level, all right, uh, working with the police while I was in service. Okay, especially in Lagos State, where uh, I was in charge of OP Mesa. I, I was actually the first operational commander of OP Mesa. Okay, it all originated while I was there. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, how much of funding, let's be frank, is the federal government pumping into the police force at the various states? Most states have taken over the funding of the police. Besides paying of salaries by the federal government, what else? If I use labor state as an example, God bless the states, I must say. They just have fantastic leaders. I don't know how they treat. All right? The initiative that came up here through the labor state uh, 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 police force force and so on has made the police force in Lagos something else. Okay? They've been able to come up with the RRS uh, arrangement and all sorts of things with the state government mobilizing the entire a business community within the states and fantastic huge sums have been generated you know it's been generated and going into the police so how can the federal they're not really spending much i must say maybe much is being voted but i must say i don't see much being spent i was thinking by now some serious reforms would have been going on in the police force especially after the NSAS bitter experience we had i was thinking the federal government would have learned its lessons I begin to see how we go straight into police reforms. There's a great deal of reform required in the national security sector, especially with the police. I don't see any serious reforms going on. 
where I would have said maybe a lot of money is going on into training, this, that, and so on. No. In nearly every state where today we have uh, 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 the military complementing the effort of the police on ground, we know how much state governments are spending. And that's why some of the governors are saying, allow us to have our own police force. And then this money, or uh, this entire money we are pumping in, in the various, at the various state level, will go into our own police. I think that would have just been proper. That would have been proper. We can see how much they are really spending. Let's give them some chance. The, the federal government could lay out the guidelines. We're not saying give them a free hand. Our politicians are not as mature as that. They are like children. They are like related people. Because I don't know. let's not go into something else. The point is this. Look, we are right for subnational state police. All right. Let's, let's talk go into it. All right, I still want us to talk about um, funding in as much as you have said that the federal government, um, you know, have actually failed uh, in their capacity to really fund um, the Nigeria Police Force. You know, if it were left uh, to the hands of um, state governors, you know, do you really think uh, it would be better? For instance, uh, you mentioned that uh, Lagos is doing, you know, arguably very well when it comes to police in the state, what would the state uh, security trust fund that is on? You know, but for Lagos and um, just a few states, would you really think uh, that other states would adequ adequately fund their policing system when they most of the times complain of um, funds and they are always running, you know, cap in hand to the federal government at the end of the month, you know, for federal allocation? Yes, because most of the governors don't have their thinking caps on. Okay? Uh, they lack what it takes to enhance on their IGRs. All right? I have always said it. A lot of these states should always peep into Lagos. See what Lagos is doing. Withdraw back to your state and replicate it. If I were any of them by now, whoever is in charge of Lagos will be one of my best friends. And I'll be copying notes from him like school boys and go back to my state and improve my state so that there will be some level of governance. So the point I'm making here invariably is that look, they can generate some little amount of money that can allow them to take off. You, want, you take off at a small level. You don't just take off as if you have every, all at, uh, everything at your disposal. All right? You take off at a little level. You, your first recruitment might not go beyond more than, say, 500 men, okay? And you use that as a guinea pig, all right? You keep them, you train them, and so on. And then, of course, there'll be a great deal of oversight function from the federal police or from the federal government, all right? There must be a great deal of oversight. And, of course, it, that will just come in naturally anyway, because I hope you know that even when we have uh, states of course, there will be police and the federal police. This initial state, there will be a great deal of guidance coming in from the federal police. A great deal. After about three, four, five years, we'll be withdrawing completely. We'll be withdrawing. The federal will be withdrawing to allow them, you know, actually pick up adequately. For funding, they just have to buy what they can chew. When you bite more than what you can chew or swallow, that is your problems. Go at your pace. Simple. All right. Uh, I still need us to talk more about um, organization and a bit of control, you know, because a lot of proponents for, uh, you know, state policing have said over time that if it were in existence, the issue of, uh, you know, the killings we have on the federal highways, uh, intercommunal clashes and all that would be brought to a considerably low point because uh, the community members would actually understand themselves and they will be able to know how to judge you and that the policemen will be from the region. But then again, how do we begin to manage uh, you know, the issue of um, community policing? Because for some states, they have uh, network security watches and right now most regions are calling for regional you know security network what with the armor and of course 
Ibubago in the southeast. How do we begin to manage all of this you know, while we still look for getting a way to making the state's uh, policing system work? Thank you. Uh, since the, 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 uh, the local uh, structure, the Amotekun, to the same political master, that is to say Amotekun, the state uh, police, will all be answerable to the state governor, who, of course, at that time uh, is at the helm of affairs, okay, security-wise and so on. Uh, there will be a great deal of synergy between both. I don't see any form of problems, except where people deliberately want to come up with problems. There will be guidelines, okay, uh, there will be operational guidelines, uh, 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 or, or, or job descriptions will be well spread out, okay? Uh, you mentioned it. Milestones will be placed, and so on. So at every point, at every point, there will be some level of guidance, all right? Uh, for instance, uh, I don't know if Amotoku has a right of uh, 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 power prosecution and so on. Otherwise, they would have to transfer to the state police whatever they arrest they effect. There will be that synergy between them and so on. Why the state police now have authority for, 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 for prosecution and so on, and the rest. All so right. with such synergy, yeah. with such operational guidelines, and so on. I don't see any hitch. All we need to do is to make sure a great deal of speed work is done. Paperwork is well carried out, spelled out before takeoff. There must be a high level of speed work going on before takeoff. Okay, so would you actually um, propose the same, you know, uh, coordination for community policing? Uh, uh, like you have um, suggested for regional policing. Thank you. Uh, community policing is one area where I really feel uh, I have so much of interest, okay, because with the state police coming in, it makes it easier for community policing to take off, all right? And we all know that community policing, are right, uh, community police, they are right at the grassroots, all right? They are... Uh, policemen who are posted to particular communities or locations and so on, and they are expected to be there for as long as possible so that they get to understand the community, the community gets to know them, the community continues to cooperate, synergize with them, and does a great deal of their activities, and so on. The communities buy into their activities. The communities take ownership of their activities and their actions and so on, so that information flows so easily from the community to the community police, and so from the community police to the state police. You see that information flow that would eventually get crystallized into intelligence flows far, far faster and easier and simpler. There is nothing as fantastic as community policing, and we need it. We need it seriously. But without state policing, it becomes more difficult. Because when you are talking of community policing, in most cases, you are referring to individuals who, to a greater extent, are indigenous to the place. As a policeman within that situation and so on, people know you, you know them. People who saw when you were born are there. It's just like when I walk up to the streets where I was born, uh, way back in Kaduna, uh, you see find very elders, people who were there when they received you, and so on. You know, you yourself will check yourself. You will not be the type who will be collecting 20 naira on the street when you know Uncle This is seeing me, Uncle Alex is seeing me, Baba Toby is seeing me. You will comport yourself and do your job. That self-discipline will come in. And it will enhance generally, you know, the level of discipline in the entire uh, police structure. All right, um, Colonel, now that you've mentioned that uh, community policing actually is uh, very workable if we have um, state policing. So right now, lawmakers have rejected state policing. What do we do going forward? How do we make 
you know, the status quo better? How do we make um, the Nigerian police force better in as much as we still have to wait uh, for us to get the state policing right? What do we do going forward? We just can keep on folding our arms and watch um, you know, Nigerians die by the day with all of the, the insurgencies and of course uh, the banditry that we hear in the Northwest and the Northeast. What do we do going forward? In a circumstance where we have representatives or senators who don't listen to what their people want, but listen to what the presidency wants, one may the first thing you do is to make sure it's that come 2023, most of these guys are thrown out of that thing. Two, make sure. All right, I think that's as much as we can take from uh, Colonel Hassan Stanlabo. We seem to be having some um, disconnect. Uh, we have been looking at the, the state policing concept in Nigeria, how it has been you know, rejected by the lawmakers and them. Um, in as much as uh, our guest has said that uh, it is the way forward and uh, we have to be exploring other, other you know, uh, other models, uh, including that of um, community policing, we just uh, have to keep on pressing and keep on pushing to ensure that one day the voice of the people, you know, is heard in this country of ours. Well, thanks for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, uh, revenue generating agencies are being taxed with remitting three trillion there annually. Well, let's see if they can actually achieve that more when we return in a moment. Don't go away.